Renaissance and once again a world class city and a city that is now far greener than it was once uh, grey. Uh, I'm speaking here with, uh, in two capacities really, one's the leader of the uh, City Council but more significant is the chair of the uh, Greater Manchester Combined Authorities Low Carbon Hub Board and uh, it's important because when we're talking about uh, Manchester, when we're talking about uh, na uh, nature of the city region, when we're talking about uh, uh, landscape, that uh, the National England Group for Greater Manchester is wholly integrated into the uh, low carbon hub. It's part of the combined authority, it's part of the Greater Manchester uh, strategy. It's not an add on, it's not out there, they're, they're somewhere. It's an important and central part of what we do and is integrated both in policy terms but also in structural terms uh, as well. That's because we recognise the importance of protecting and enhancing our natural assets. Uh, and looking at landscape scale approaches to environmental. Uh, improvements is an important consideration for all ten of the Greater Manchester local authorities. And green and blue infrastructure now has equal billing with all other key in infrastructures that are needed to make a livable and a thriving urban life. In order to maximise the benefits of uh, green landscape, green infrastructure, we need a fuller understanding of its usefulness. Climate change adaptation is a key component of this as we look to develop sustainable economic growth within Greater Manchester. And, uh, uh, last year, I think, an Eco Cities research project at the University of, of Manchester, supported by uh, Broadwood, uh, produced a report that demonstrated that uh, uh, simply by increasing canopy and increasing uh, surface water, uh, key elements of green, uh, green and blue would we'll be able to reduce surface temperatures by several uh, degrees as long as it was at the right sort of uh, right sort of scale. It's able to compare development that took like an ultra green form against uh, more conventional forms of development. It's important for us in the city region where we are at the forefront of tackling climate change. The Greater Manchester Climate Change Strategy tackles the opportunities and challenges that climate change presents up to the uh, year 2020. It's our roadmap to a greener, better future, backed by an ambitious implementation plan which currently runs uh, and, uh, up to 2015. Clearly when we get, uh, get close to that date it will be updated to run for the rest of the period of the plan and beyond uh, that. And it details specific actions that will tackle climate change adaptation and mitigation. We need to build a common understanding of the causes and the implications of climate change and develop programmes of carbon literacy so that the new culture can become part of the daily lives of all individuals and organisations. The stronger the evidence base, the stronger the business case and the better the projects. We're building new robust partnerships in order to deliver real life change. I'll give you a, a, a few examples that relate uh, to your discussions today. Uh, less than five miles away from here, that means it's actually not in the city of Manchester, uh, we are working with the Environment Agency on a groundbreaking pilot project to re-naturalise a stretch of the Medlock in East Manchester that was culverted over 100 years ago. This, the works will help reduce flood risk and improve biodiversity and this project was presented at the European River Restoration Conference in Vienna last week. Although I say that work is currently five miles away, uh, we also have an ambition as part of other strategic planning to bring that right into the heart of the city centre. The so River Medlock actually flows no more than a couple of hundred metres away from where we sit now. But you would struggle to find it a couple of hundred metres away from here at the, at, at the moment. We've recently endorsed our first nature improvement area within uh, Greater Manchester. It's a sulphur, isn't it, uh, Derek? I think, yeah. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it is a sulphur, yeah. Uh, the Wetlands Partnership area of interest covers some 40,000 hectares and has an ambitious £3.7 million uh, programme of works up to 2014-15. The nature improvement area will improve biodiversity, deliver significant <coughs> carbon savings and also deliver social and economic benefits. And I guess it's also an example of the diversity of the Greater Manchester uh, lands landscape, going from uh, uh, the grid stone of the Pennines uh, in the uh, east of the conurbation 
through to those uh, uh, mosses and flat, flatlands and wetlands in the west of the conurbation. And again, uh, an example of that, of the land area of the city of Salford, uh, about 30% of it is uh, uh, peat bog as, as, as we go over chat, chat moss. Quite remarkable landscapes in uh, what is essentially an urban region. In Withershaw, as part of uh, a £1 million real food project, green spaces are being used as growing uh, spaces to try and break the cycle of poor nutrition and, and, and food poverty. And on the banks of the River Irwell in Salford, the Biospheric Foundation is creating and experimenting with sustainable food systems in a disused mill. The site has been... Uh, and I've lost myself... I know what the site is, uh, is doing, as well as uh, uh, growing within the, within the mill itself. It's also taking uh, the, the, what were derelict urban spaces around along the river and is creating with the local community uh, down there ways of producing sustainable food uh, for that neighbourhood and hopefully exemplars about how we can do that uh, elsewhere. And I guess the Biospheric Project also is an interesting linkage between uh, between art and landscape as well, because it uh, is a, a project that came from this year's Manchester International uh, Festival. It's a project supported by, uh, by Salford Council, but I think an important linkage between culture and uh, sustainability. Uh, the long-term future of a greener Greater Manchester will entail changes in the way that we live, the way we work, and changes in the way we move around. That, uh, ideas and attitudes about reducing emissions will have become embedded, routine and automatic. We will be generating a lot of our own energy within the city region and will be using it more effectively. More trees and green spaces will help us to, uh, to keep us cooler and healthier and the buildings we live in will be changed. We are committed to leading by example to be a positive catalyst for change and the projects I outlined, I outlined earlier demonstrate this but we want to go further that's why recently we signed uh, two memorandums of understanding with government departments, one with DEC and the other with uh, DEFRA, which will support us working with government to take these agendas further. Supported by the government's Natural Environment White Paper, the Natural Choice, which emphasises the need to reinforce the connectivity between people and places. And the European Commission in 2013 adopted its own green infrastructure strategy to promote the deployment of green infrastructure in the EU in urban and rural areas. At Greater Manchester level, we have a city region green infrastructure framework which is key for delivering our aspirations. By the end of the year, Manchester itself will also aim to have in place their own city-specific green and blue infrastructure framework. This will set out how the City Council and partners will scale up our interventions so that becoming a green city region can, can be integral to our future success. Finally, constantly evolving and innovating is a, a trademark of Greater Man Manchester, one which is a vital element of how we will respond to climate change. The natural environment presents a significant economic opportunity to those who respond positively by creating the right environment for investment for people who want to live and work in the, the city region. And it's often a false dichotomy created between uh, growth and jobs and a green city, city. I think that's fundamentally wrong. These are things that have to go very closely together, absolutely hand in hand. The path to a livable future can only be a sustainable one. If the world's definitive industrial city, which made its name and livelihood from coal, from steam, from the utilisation of our natural resources, can aim to be a green city and can succeed in being a green city, then there will be no city anywhere in the world that can say for them it's too difficult. The seminar this morning provides us with a great opportunity to share knowledge, information and research to further develop our understanding of the natural environment. It's fantastic that so many people from across Greater Manchester uh, are here, but it's also great to see a number of people from outside Greater <coughs> Manchester who've come to share their knowledge with us uh, as well. 
because all of that will help to inform, educate and inspire us, inspire others, from planners and developers to teachers and school students about the critical importance of green infrastructure to the future success of our cities. So thank you very much for taking the time uh, to be here. I uh, hope you, this seminar is going to be really, really uh, successful and I'm absolutely certain, knowing that uh, a number of the people who are here, that this will be a serious contribution to but a short, medium and long-term ambition to make sure that Manchester is the green city. Thank you very much.